Are you a real estate agent that has struggled with building a team? If the answer is yes, then you're in the right room. So if you're a real estate agent that has struggled with building a team, uh, first of all, you're in the right room and uh, so have we. So Clayton gets John Tiller here. And you know, I have, uh, I've spent the last, gosh, 18 years. JT, how long have you been been uh, playing this game? Yeah, it's not nice to to talk about age, but 20, 22 years. <laughs> 22 yeah. years. So 18 years uh, for me, 22 years for JT. And uh, so, man, I have uh, faced all of the same struggles that I'm sure uh, you guys have in 2005 when I got into the market as a brand new agent, uh, just trying to figure out uh, really how to survive. And, you know, was fortunate to get in the room again with, you know, we just believe in the power of proximity and getting in the room with men and women that are smarter than we are, uh, that are where we want to be. And over the past 18 years, uh, as I intentionally did that, I went from single agent to building a team to where we are today, where we've got about 50 agents and staff at Mission Realty here in Richmond, Virginia, brokered by eXp. And we are very, very blessed to, last year we sold about 160 million in sales. And, uh, and we run a business. John and I run a real estate business. And it hasn't always been that way, by the way. When John and I partnered together, as a matter of fact, John looked under the the, the Mission Realty hood and he was like, oh my goodness, Clayton, I don't know how you you uh, you have sold as many houses as you have. So uh, when John came in, he, uh, he put a lot of things together, including uh, what we're gonna share with you today is how, it doesn't matter where you are uh, in terms of your real estate team, or if you're a brand new agent, we're gonna show you how to progress through these different levels, JT. Yeah, so our goal today is to make the path smoother for you than it was for us, right? We spent our whole lives getting, our whole business lives, trying to get in the room, getting in the room with people who are better, faster, and smarter than us, who paved a way ahead of us. But of course, things are always changing. So today we wanted to talk about six levels of the real estate team in the future. I started out as an independent agent like most. I built a, uh, uh, built a team in the early years, and then I built a brokerage with 120 agents in that brokerage. And then I saw the future of real estate looked a little bit different, uh, in my opinion, than traditional brokerage. And so we started something new and, and Clayton and I partnered together not long after that and realized that if you're of like mind, like mission, of like values, that you can go farther and faster together. One plus one equals 10, not one plus one equals two. And that's what I have, that's what we've been looking for our whole careers, not just partnerships at the senior level, but partnerships with everyone in our organization. And we will do some separate videos on, on hiring, but what you'll hear, hopefully, if you take nothing else away from this, it's always be hiring up front in the middle and in the end always be hiring and we'll talk more about that but we want to talk about the positions and what the organizational chart really looks like for the real estate team of the future so you can identify where you're at today and maybe help know what the next step might be yeah good stuff so let's let's uh let's jump in jt all right, so here we go, building the real estate team future. So, you know, one of the things that if we, if John and I could go back and do things ba just based purely on what we know today and what we've learned over the past 18 years, 22 years for JT, he's older than I am, uh, is what would we have, what would we have done differently knowing what we know today? And it starts, it starts at at the really the brand new agent level, at level one, where we would have leveraged ourselves. Uh, sooner. In other words, we would have hired a, there, there's so many virtual transaction coordination options available today that what John and I have learned is if we can keep ourselves or you in the real estate, you know, agent lane, like what is your job as a real estate agent? I believe your job is to generate leads and then to, then to work with those uh, leads, work with buyers and sellers, uh, negotiate contracts. And that's where it ends. And there's a level where you may not even be negotiating contracts. But if you can stay in that lane, there's a there's really not a ceiling in terms of your income because look, let's look at it this way. If an hour of your time is worth, let's call it $100 an hour. Well, if we can offer an opportunity or a job to someone else that gets it, wants it, and has the capacity to do it, GWC, then why not if we can pay somebody $15 to $20 an hour uh, to stay in their lane and we're offering them an opportunity. So we believe in leveraging ourselves at the right out of the gates, you know, hiring a virtual transaction coordinator, and you can go uh, certainly from zero to 50 transactions here 
And we do believe that the traditional real estate model is broken. And that's why leveraging sooner, we're, we're kind of taught to do everything ourselves in this business. And that is not, I mean, there is a better way. And again, looking back in terms of what we would have done differently, this is absolutely what we would have done differently right out of the gates. JT, you want to add anything? Yeah, there is a better way. And everything you were describing, our job as the, the lead agent, as the rainmaker, if you will, is to be just that and to do income producing activities. So believe it or not, uh, scheduling an inspection is not an income producing activity. Even sitting at the inspection, and we'll get to that later, but there are lots of administrative things it's prospecting, sales, and negotiating. Those are the income producing activities that we do as agents. And the earlier that we start delegating the responsibilities that are uh, that we can hire out for a lower dollar per hour than what we want to be making, the quicker it is. And in our business, one thing that has changed dramatically is transaction coordinators who are really good will get paid at closing so you don't have to come out of pocket it's just a for you accounting guys it's a cost of goods sold in other words it's an expense that you don't have if you don't sell a house and you only have that expense when you do so why wouldn't you take three or four hundred dollars out of a ten thousand dollar commission so that you can spend five to ten hours on average extra to do lead generation or income producing activities. And by the way, that's the, what the National Association of Realtors says, the contract to closing, the amount of time that a transaction coordinator can cover for you is five to 10 hours. Mm. Yeah, it's, I mean, yes, it's so worth it. So there, there you have level one. And again, we're going to show you how to progress regardless of where you are in your business today. We're going to show you how to progress from level one to level six, and which is basically where you own a business that runs with or without you. So here we are at level two, where we believe here you can do uh, anywhere from 50. Remember on level one, you can do zero to 50 transactions is what that looks like. And these of course will be dependent uh, JT upon your, you know, where you are and you know, where you live and uh, what your average price per sale is. If you have a really high average price per sale, that's going to change this uh, equation a little bit, but level two, 50 to hundred transactions. And you know, one of the ways that I've always looked at this JT is kind of, um, I have a dentist that, that, uh, that I go to here in, uh, in Richmond and, you know, when I, and they just got their act together, it's, it's three partners. And when I, um, when you walk into their office, the dentist is not sitting at the reception desk. They've got like three or four amazing ladies that are there doing their thing. When it's time for my appointment, the dentist is actually not coming up and, you know, grabbing me and taking me back to the appointment. It's one of his like 10 or 15 hygienists. And here's the amazing thing. Uh, I don't even see the dentist until the last like five minutes of the appointment after my teeth are clean, everything's done. And he'll walk in and say, hey, you know what? Hey, it looks like you have a little cavity. We're gonna schedule a surgery. And then he will show up for surgery, but he doesn't show up to clean my teeth. You guys hopefully get the picture here. So uh, I, when, when I look at building the real estate team of the future, I look at like a really high performing, you know, doctor's office or attorney's office. You know, we're one of the few industries where we are again taught to do everything ourselves and it's not, there's a better way. So John, if you wanna just break down uh, what this looks like with showing assistant, TC, admin, uh, what those different roles are. For sure, I love the dentist analogy. It's absolutely true that we should be running our business as professionals that way. So the question is, if income producing activities make you $100 an hour or $200 or $500 an hour, what are the things that you can offload once you are to that 50 to 100 trans 50 transactions once you're there? And I, I want to make sure also, sometimes there's a, a lot of us who are visionaries or have visionary in us, a lot of us who are in, in that space, we try to grow too fast. And I, I see people move to level two when they've only, when they're only doing 10 or 20 transactions, 25 transactions a year on their own. Y'all, you can do, and you need to do, in my opinion, four transactions a month with a transaction coordinator before you start hiring other people, because you have to understand how the efficiencies of hiring people work. And you're gonna learn that in level one. If you hire too fast, you're, I've met a lot of team leaders. So so we'll talk about this at each level. Uh, we call it the, the face slap. We have some friends who call it some other things, but it's when you <laughs> are trying to grow your business and you're trying to offload responsibilities, but then you have to go back into doing, ultimately trying to offload production 
uh, to, to your team, but then you have to go back into production because you grew too fast. You grew your expenses too fast and you didn't do the first thing first. And so that's my encouragement to you. Just make sure you and a TC can do four transactions a month, no matter what market you're in. And again, the market will, you can fast track that in a higher price market for sure, but you and a TC can do four transactions in a month in any market that gets you to 50. Then once you get there and you know that you want to grow to the next level, that's when you take on a showing assistant who will be your next sales partner. So at 50 transactions, you can work with a lot of buyers and sellers, but you've got, in our opinion, in my opinion, you've got to stop working with, you got to stop doing house showing. So a showing assistant is going to be the biggest bang for your buck. What you do is you bring somebody on who can open doors, who can show houses. They don't sign buyer agency agreements. They don't sign listing agreements. You still do that because those are very high dollar per hour activities. They don't even negotiate contracts. They just open doors for you. The average buyer has 40 hours of, of your time invested in showing the property. 40 hours per buyer. If half of your transactions when you're at 50 or at four a month, that's 80 hours of your time. If you're doing two buyers a month, if you're if you're helping two buyers a month, that's 80 hours of your time that this showing assistant can take off of you. They are licensed and you are still the person that the client sees as the agent. Clayton, and JT, yeah, yeah, let me just jump in real quick because I think it's important to note here that guys, we're, we're hiring talent. We're always hiring talent. So one of the mistakes that John and I made early on and that we see a lot of people that we coach and mentor make is they're just hiring. They, there's not a process or a filter in place to hire people. We push everybody through a core value filter. Again, that's another uh, training for another time, but we're hiring talent. So when you put these people in front of your clients, you can be assured that they're going to be in really, you're just not throwing them in front of anyone is, is, is really, you know, the, the point there. Also, this is a highly, highly leveraged activity. John, 40, I didn't even know that statistic, 40 hours uh, is incredible. And back to the doctor's office or the dentist's office analogy, you know, uh, so many of us have been taught and trained. It's just ingrained in our minds that we have to do everything, including opening doors. Well, uh, and there are many doctors and dentists out there that are that are doing everything. You know, I, I worked for a dentist back in the day, John. You've heard this story, uh, where he did everything. You know, he did have a receptionist. I'm surprised because he was so cheap. But uh, but the point is, you know, my dentist today, the hygienist cleans my teeth, right? It's it, and that you know, the dentist could certainly do that. But one of the reasons they have scaled at at such a they run such a big office. I mean, these guys, these guys, other dentists coach and they pay them to coach and train um, to so that they can scale their offices, right? Uh, so just remember, you're, you're hiring talent and this is a highly leveraged activity right here. Yeah, for sure. And so once you're at that four a month and you want to grow to eight a month, that's the level that we're at now. A showing assistant is a key hire and then an admin and overall admin because now that you've got momentum in your business because there's you know 50 sales a year is is a really good start to a business and for some people it's where they want to end and we'll talk about that in a minute uh but the admin is the next thing you hire we've talked about here uh not just you keep the tc the transaction coordinator one of the biggest reasons to keep that tc is because she or he can handle way more than four transactions a month and you don't want to bring on a full-time person on your payroll until you until you can justify a full-time person so there's plenty of people you can outsource keep the tc so that they only you only spend money on on that position until uh when a transaction closes and you, you don't have payroll expense if there's some kind of variability in your sales but you're you're ready to hire your admin which is going to handle listing management and I'm talking everything, you you go to one appointment with that seller, you get them to agree to sell the house and then let the listing manager take everything else from that. Right. We'll do another training on that. We've done some in the past uh, of what that checklist looks like and what that listing manager can do for you. That's another five to 10 hours per transaction that you can have somebody who, the truth is if you're a great salesperson, you're probably not a great at it. And that person can actually probably be much more efficient. There are some people who are good at both, and uh, but most of the time there's a there's a place where you find joy that you're gonna you're gonna do better at anyway. Frontline contract negotiation. That admin can take a can do that frontline contract negotiation, listing prep, general office management, 
uh, scheduling showings. That's kind of, that's automated now. That's kind of that's our old school stuff kind of coming out. But and answering any answering any phones like phone calls from agents. The phone number that I have published in the MLS and the phone number that Clayton has published in the MLS do not come to us and have not for a long time. They go to our staff. We love agents. They sell our properties. But uh, it should be our admin that's answering their calls. Yep. And so uh, th that's what those positions look like. Yeah. And just, John, I, I, again, I think it's important to note here that uh, never, ever, 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 before we move on to level three, uh, don't ever hire another agent or a sales partner or a buyer's agent. It's, that's what it's traditionally called. We don't have we don't have straight buyer's agents. We'll get into that in just a minute. Yep. Um, but uh, before you have a transaction, quote, like th this, again, this is this is what we would have done differently. I see far too yes. many people hiring buyers agents and sales, and then it just increases the the workload uh, in terms of transaction management, right? And you're making less money. Remember, you are running a business. It's time to start thinking about this as a business. And um, so, as we progress to from level two, you good here, JT? Yeah, we're good. We're right. good. We're doing eight transactions a month now on average. And so right. now we're ready to look at how do we take that to 15 or 16, 200, 200 transactions a year. And this is a point where this is probably uh, level two. There are uh, there are a lot of people that don't make it past level one. Uh, but for team builders, there's a lot. A lot of people are in this level two range and are not sure how to get to level three. And it's it's all about keeping that staff. What you've done now is you've built systems and process or your transaction coordinators and admin have built system and process. Now it's just a matter of creating sales to to uh, put into that process and to put into those systems. But that's that's really the big thing you did in level two while you were making money. The, the really critical thing is it's all profit driven. Like you, you pay yourself first, and then, and then you you add to your expenses as you have the money to do that. That's another class that we teach. Uh, we've got some really really great people who, yeah. uh, who teach that. Yeah, and and John, just to uh, I think this is kind of um, uh, you have a better word for it, but it's this is the danger zone. Uh, this there's this is level three to me is kind of a slippery slope because this is where a lot of agents, including myself, uh, when I was team building early on, this is where you can get stuck because you know you you've got a team of you know, uh, well, there you go, 10 to 14 sales partners. And, um, and and you can, if you settle into that, you are, you're still in production for the most part at this, at level three. And again, if you're thinking about this, uh, running a business like a business, then what you should be thinking is how do I, how do I eventually work myself out of production and have a profitable business and just give those opportunities to other people on, uh, on the team. So, uh, you know, Again, generating leads, lead generation is easy. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that I learned, John, along the way through lots of coaching and mentorship and is that this is where you have to scale. Like this is like go big or go home is, is level three. And we're going to get into that as we as we progress here. Uh, but you you're not just hiring one agent. OK, you're hiring multiple agents at a time at this. This is where you become a recruiter of of, uh, of real estate agents to the team. And from this level on, you're always recruiting to the team. All, excuse me. You're always recruiting the right people to the team. That is critical, uh, <laughs> critical, critical. And uh, But don't get stuck here. Don't be satisfied at level three because th this can be a, uh, like I said, a slippery slope. Well, that's it. And and also just want to want to take a, a little bit of a sidebar here and acknowledge if you don't want to sell more than 100 transactions a year and you're really happy at level two, then you you should and you're profitable at level two and you're happy doing it. That's great. You stay there until you're until you're not. If you're wondering, hey, I think there's something more. I think I might want to get off the transaction treadmill myself someday. Then then this is the this is the thing to start doing. And probably the biggest issue that we hear from any of our partners who have uh, gone through this transition, it's, well, you know, I have a hard time believing that somebody else can do the job better than me because my clients just love me. And that's true. They do love you because you've done a great job of telling them you're going to take care of them. Don't change that. Keep telling them you're going to take care of them. It's just going to be people on your team that you're making sure actually do uh, do all of the the work that it takes to take care of them. And so when it comes to hiring sales partners, one of the biggest mistakes that we see is that people go and they hire one sales partner. 
Like that's the biggest mistake you can make because there's no, it takes no more energy, takes no more time, takes no more other financial resources to hire three than it does one. And what happens is when you hire three, two are going to make it and one is not. And it, and it costs you just as much time and money and energy as it would have for just one. And there are some of you who are really high capacity leaders. You could actually hire more than three at a time. But, but really, uh, one of the things that, that I wish we had done, that I wish I had done uh, early on was to really stick to that rule of these are, these are my start dates. I'm hiring three people to start on this day and bring them through my new hire process and bring them all through at the same time. And even if somebody's ready right now, I'll, find, I'll bring them on if they're the right person and they're the right fit. I'll bring them on and I'll find something for them to do. But training starts on the first Tuesday of the month or whatever it is, and I bring them all through at the same time. And now as we're, as we're larger, we have those, those classes start every month and we, we might have four to 10 people in a class uh, every month. Yep. Yeah, and John, just touch on this really quickly because I, I, I want to make sure that um, you know this distinction is drawn here. Why do we have a separate listing manager uh, instead of the transaction manager just just doing it all, doing the listing management and the uh, the closing as well? Sure, you can go both ways. Uh, you could you could go either way. If you have a transaction coordinator who is on your payroll then they, they could do both and it just depends on your volume. A transaction coordinator can handle about 300, a, a high producing transaction coordinator can handle about 300 sides, which would include like a listing would be two sides because they got to get the listing and then they got to take it from contract to closing. The biggest reason that these stay separate is because you haven't brought the transaction coordinator on payroll yet. And it can go either way. What we found, even after we had them both on payroll, what we found is that a listing manager who focuses on the listing process, that is a complicated process. And it looks different than contract to closing. Uh, and so we, we've kept that separate with an admin on staff. The transaction court, that is not something that in our industry, there's a lot of people you can outsource that to and certainly that, that are that are kind of just ready to take it. In our industry, there's a lot of people you can outsource TC work to and they're they're ready to take it. You can give them a checklist and they can do that. So that's why we separate it. But if you have somebody on payroll and they have the time capacity based on your sales volume, it is okay to have the same person bring it all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that changes, and we can you and I can argue about this later, John. But uh, sure, but I yeah. think it changes a little bit as as you as your volume increases, and you kind of alluded to that. So so uh, yeah, no, I you're exactly right, it, and and it's all about focus, right? Yeah, and right. and the biggest reason as your volume increases is to keep people focused on what they do. There's a concept called roundtable production that was invented in the industrial age that says. Uh, if I'm on an assembly line to build a car, and my only job is to put the tire on the wheel, put the tire on the wheel, put the tire on the wheel, I don't, I shouldn't be doing anything else in the assembly line to build that car because I will be the best and most efficient person at putting the tire on the wheel. And and you're you're exactly right about that, Clayton. Love it, love it. Okay, so here we go. We're progressing from level three to level four, where we're going from 100 to 200 transactions, 10 to 14 sales partners, to 200 to 300. Uh, transactions with 20 plus sales partners. Now, again, this is for this is for people. And I love that you said, you know, look, if you're happy here uh, or you're happy here, then that's totally fine. What I have found and John, I believe what you have found as well. And many of the people that we I mean, I hear this all the time, like I am done. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of working six, seven days a week. I'm tired of, you know, not being able to go on vacation without my phone ringing off the hook. Again, like think about running a business like a business so what most people you, where where you might be very hap, happy here you're still in production you love working with those buyers you love your seller clients uh what we found is that at some point you're gonna you're gonna be looking for other solutions and that's where we come to to level four at this level this is where you as a business owner you can begin to step away from production in this 20 plus sales partner 200 to 300 transaction range now to be clear your income might, uh, this may impact your income uh, until we progress to the next two levels. It may impact your income slightly negatively for the short term. 
But on the other side of this thing, as you're going to see, you will have an opportunity for your income to, to really to 10 X because of other business opportunities. We'll touch on that in just a minute, but here, this is where your sales manager, and by the way, guys, all of these people are, we're hiring from within, you know, the only person that I've, that I, um, gosh, John, I, I guess, uh, Prior to Rebecca, who's our media and marketing manager now, the only person that we have hired from the outside of the company was you. Well, right. we do have some admin that we've hired from from outside. Correct. But yeah, that's, right, right, that's right. true. Yep. That, yeah, right. That's but all true. the sales all the sales partners have. So our sales manager Sarah has been you know, has been that's promoted right. from, because we're hiring talent. The gentleman uh, Adam that is uh, most likely going to be running uh, a large portion of our capital company. He was one of our listing partners. We're raising up from within because we're hiring talent, right? And talent is going to want opportunities. So John, you want to break this down uh, specifically? I'd love for you to touch on, oops, excuse me. Love for you to touch on uh, the squad leaders that show up at level four. Yeah, for sure. So I'd, I'd like to nod real quick though to the financial part that you uh, that you just talked about. And this is a confusing part. And again, results in the face slap when we try to get out of production and then we have to go back in production because we realize, oh, we're not making the money we should. From an accounting perspective, and, it, and that's a it's, it's another class too, but let me just give you some, some bullets real quick. From an accounting perspective, you have got to, as the lead agent, you have got to count your own, because you got to stay profitable. That's that's how you continue to, to move forward. You've got to count your own commissions. You got to pay yourself as a salesperson. The sales commissions that you generate as a salesperson are not your profit. That's your, and no matter what it looks like from a tax perspective, you've got to pay yourself as a, as you pay anybody else who, who you would replace yourself with so that you can see, okay, if I hire a listing partner, my listing commission is going to go over here. And then you have, there's three, there's three buckets that you uh, pay yourself with. One is as a, as an agent, the other is as a sales manager. And the last one is as the owner who right. takes the profit. And so you're going to continue to be the owner that wants to grow their profit, but I, but too many agents, as they're transitioning and, and looking for a way to transition out of production, they're counting their commissions as profit, and they're not. You're you're doing the work for those commissions and for the sales manager. So uh, that is a uh, that's a pro tip that will help you avoid the face slap that gets you when you try to get out of production that gets you back back um, into production to help you avoid that. So um, we talked about listing listing partners, just someone who is a machine on listing appointments that you're generating. They know how to do the listing presentation and they can just nail it every time. That personality type is generally different than your sales partner who works with buyers and sellers. Uh, that sales partner, uh, if we're using the DIS personality profile, the listing partner is generally a DI or ID and the sales partner is generally an IS or, or SI. That, that's not to pigeonhole anybody. They're all personality types, can learn to do each function, but that's generally what works out. But if you're gonna scale multiple sales partners, you have, you, you'll have a sales manager or a lead sales agent back at level, you kind of between level three and level four, you'll bring that person up. But then once you're beyond uh, 10 or 12 agents, that sales manager who is, who is really responsible for getting agents productive and keeping agents productive. That's the sales manager's job is recruiting and retention, recruiting and retention, which means getting them productive and keeping them productive. That's their job. And that's a, that's a big job. Any of you who have ever done it, it's a, it's a big job and it's a, it's a lot of work. And that person can only do that job well uh, for it is, it's my belief that you, you can't really have more than a dozen direct reports and do that well. And the truth is, it should be more like half a dozen. So anywhere from six to 12 is the maximum capacity of direct reports that, that anybody has, I believe in any position. And, and certainly there are exceptions to that. But when we look to grow our team to uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 agents, uh, we needed to find a way to give our sales manager capacity. And we tried different models uh, over the years and, and have been successful with a bunch of different models. And, and uh, the one we have now is the most successful we've ever been. And it's the squad leader model. And the squad leader is the, is the number one job of a squad leader. This is generally a salesman, a sales partner that you're going to promote. And the number one job of that sales partner is to, is their own production. These guys are doing what they teach and they're the frontline support 
for sales partners. Now they're not the new hire trainer, sales manager at this point will still do that. They're not the mentor for a new agent who needs handholding through their first few transactions. That's also another function. But the squad leader, once they get through the new hire process, the squad leader is frontline support. They hold uh, daily accountability sessions. It's, it's not quite daily, we do them three times a week and uh, generally Tuesday through Thursday. And it's accountability for lead generation is what they're doing. And they do frontline coaching for agents. And it's been a, um, it's just been a really, really good function. The, the latest twist that we put on squad leaders was a couple of years ago, which really just dialed, it, dialed this in. And that was that we put a 90 day window. Uh, every squad leader signs up, they get invited for a 90 day period and there's no commitment beyond that for them and their team gets reset uh, every 90 days. We do a, a really cool kind of back room. Uh, imagine a, a, a NFL draft style back room, smoke filled dark room <laughs> where, uh, where we're picking people off the roster and there, there's a round robin uh, draft that happens with the squad leaders every 90 days. We have a lot of fun with that. And uh, obviously we don't, we keep it confidential because nobody wants to know they were the last kid picked on the, on the playground. And so we, uh, we keep that process confidential, but it brings fun. It keeps things fresh because I have a new squad. If I, you know, not everybody is a good fit for everybody when it comes to leadership and, and mentoring and men mentees and mentors. And some people just aren't good fit. So the squad leaders can change that up every, every 90 days. We'll do an entire training on that in the near future also. Clayton, it sounds like we have a lot of uh, training to do in the near future on these things fact, we're talking I think, about. I think next week uh, we talked about doing the squad leader, um, training on the squad leader, just breaking that down, how we pay yeah. them, what that looks like, what are the competitions yep. like, how do, how do we reward the squad that wins everything? So there's, there's, a, there's a lot there which we'll unpack uh, over time. Uh, so so th this, this, uh, this is where you're gonna see a lot of pieces here that will just expand in level five and level six. You good here, JT? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, here we go. So uh, on to level five. And again, what you're what you're going to notice here is just an expansion. So you're going to have more squad leaders, right? You're going to have um, potentially more ISAs. You're definitely definitely going to have more sales partners. So we're going from two to three hundred transactions, twenty sales, twenty plus sales partners, to three to five hundred transactions here with thirty three plus sales partners. And again, this is where. You, uh, you, you are always hiring the right people. Always, 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 always at this level. Once you're here, you're committed. <laughs> like you're, you're all in, right? Uh, so, um, uh, JT, if you want to touch on uh, any anything unique about this level, I, I see the next level group kind of shows up here. Uh, do you want to touch yeah. on that? Anything else? Yeah. Well, and for us, this is where inside sales showed up also. And this is one thing that I that I would I, I would have you consider if you're building a team to bring ISAs on earlier. I have one of my friends and mentor, and it just it just kind of it just kind of depends on who you are and and how how good you've built in fanatical follow up to your culture and the people that can do that. It's always going to be important for sales partners to do that. Uh, however, the earlier you can bring on ISAs who are converting with appropriate expectations and they are they are a profit center, they are not a cost center like the administrative team is, even though the administrative team is taking off responsibility, ISAs should be a profit center. So that's, that's one thing that this is the latest that you want to add your ISAs. And then the next level group is just for your top performers. As you grow your team, you're going to come to a place uh, where you've grown agents who have kind of, they've gone through the training and, they, and they're doing themselves 30, 40, 50, 60 sales a year, family served per year is what we call it. And so, and they wanna go to the next level and they honestly, they don't want your, uh, you, they don't want any of your, they are your frontline leadership. So they still wanna learn from you. So as you grow, this is where your direct reports, that, that's one that's really a great investment is giving them the opportunity and coaching your next level group to how to get to their next level, how to get to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 transactions on their own by leveraging support and helping them. One of the things that traditional teams that that I think is it's going away in general, we saw it several years ago and we're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. The old team model says, hey, this is a, uh, but you hire fire agents who work with your buyers only, and you, you run it like a sweatshop 
and then you and then they'll go work somewhere else on their own. They'll, they'll go do something else, but they'll 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 be exper- they'll gain experience and they go through. It's almost like going through um, uh, what do they call it? Hell week for uh, uh, when when you go in the military and you, you go through boot camp. It's like boot camp or hell week for them, but but it's like hell year or two. <laughs> and it's a sweat job. That's what the traditional model is, right? right well, right. and then there's the brokerage traditional model, which is you don't get any support, so you generally have to know what you're doing. You don't you don't get a lot, but you don't pay a lot, and that that's the other side of the spectrum. So what we felt like was was that there a teamerage model. We had a friend who who kind of coined that term. And uh, what if there was a place where we could provide all the support they need, and they can continue to grow their careers? And we can we can raise our leadership lid so that they can raise their own leadership lid, and there's always an opportunity for them. And so for Clayton and I, this is the most exciting thing we do is lead leaders and help grow and develop leaders by giving them something to lead and by uh, by staying with them and helping coach the ones who who kind of stand out and say, hey, listen, I want to take my business to the next level. And I want to do that with you, but if you're not going to give me an opportunity to do it, I'm going to have to go do it somewhere else. And right. we encourage that. We we tell them, hey, listen, it's our job to make sure we raise that leadership lid, lid. So that's what the Next Level Group is about, is giving top performers an opportunity to uh, to continue to grow their business within the team. And it's profitable for all of us, and most of, first of all, for them. That's right. That's right. And just to just to point out again, you know, the, it's the next level group where, uh, and, and I believe you alluded to this, JT, but all all the listing partners and sales partners that are in this next level group here are doing thirty or more transactions per year. We run the math on uh, roughly, uh, I believe it's fourteen uh, transactions. Not everybody. And this was a big lesson that I've learned, uh, you know, over over time, John. As I was told in the beginning that. Hey, if you don't sell 24 houses a year, then you can't be on the team, right? Two houses a month, you can't be on the team. Well, the change that the transition that we've made is if you're a good culture fit, if you are a great culture fit and you don't want to sell 24 houses, like, and and, you know, just an example, John, is if you are, for um, uh, if you are a retired um, wife of a physician, for example, and your uh, physician uh, husband is referring you, you know, business. And uh, and you're doing big, big, big sales, but you only want to sell, you know, 10, 11, 12 houses a year. As long as you are a good culture fit, I, I am hiring you all day long. And so we're, we do the math uh, basically on our sales partners on average, 14 uh, home sales per year. Ours average a lot, whole lot more than that because we're hiring talent and there's a culture piece to that. But we do the math on about 14 uh, transactions per agent per year, unless you're part of the next level group. Yeah, and so what that also does is that gives the the achievers, if you will, uh, and not that everybody isn't an achiever, but the people who who want to move, it gives them a goal. Like the people who are sales partners on squads, they want to make it to the next level group, and they know that the requirement there is to sell thirty homes or serve thirty families a year, uh, and want to grow. Like if you just if you're selling thirty and you want to stay there, that's okay, but that that's not next level if you're not wanting to grow. And so we'll coach you up to. To grow that and that that becomes a that's a that's a reward like that's a uh, that's a goal that a lot of our sales partners have and and we're growing that and that will become multiple groups as we grow also yeah awesome you ready to move on jt let's do it all right here we go so um so here here's uh you know one of the things early on in my career you know i always i always uh you know i, I read about and i heard about this this unicorn in in uh, our real estate profession called the seventh level. And uh, and I tried to, I, I actually, you know, hit seventh level sort of uh, twice, uh, kind of forced myself into the seventh level and was pulled back into production uh, both times. And what, um, what, it, what we would have done differently, again, we just laid out a lot of that through uh, progressing through these levels. But the, the main thing that I would have done differently and the number one thing that I've learned, we've said it already and I'm going to say it again, is always hiring the right people. So so look at this guy. This 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 seemed daunting to me, you know, just five, six short years ago. What do you mean 30 to 100 sales partners like that's that's ridiculous. Well, this is where we're going. We're at 50 today. We're going to 100 uh, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, and here's what happens at this. And I, I lo- here's what I love so much about about where we are, John. This is where we are today. This is where our business at Mission Realty uh, is today. 
So you've got John, John as the as the GM. And, and John, I'll let you speak into this in just a minute and how much your life has changed and how much more time you have that you're, you know, you don't have to sell houses, you don't have to do all the things that you were doing, running your own brokerage previously. Uh, but what it's done is, uh, and John, we actually need to connect some dots over here because we, you know, we we actually own all these businesses together for the most part. Um, right. But it's allowed me to now, um, by design, you know, I spent spent uh, the better part of 15, 16 years uh, building this business and, and the last few years building it together with John. So now I'm focused on these, on our other business opportunities. Uh, John is still running the real estate company today. The, really the, the next step for us and could be for you as well is, uh, is to find a replacement for John. The job of a leader, John Maxwell, the job of a leader is to replace him or herself, right? So John's job is going to be to replace himself here uh, in the not too distant future. Um, but it really allows us to, so, so I, I mentioned um, a few minutes ago that your income could be negatively impacted at level four as you begin to transition out of, out of production. But my lifestyle improved, my time with my family, my being present with my family, not working seven days a week, that improved dramatically. Now at level five and level six, as you start to look at other business opportunities, uh, and that, listen, this is all up to you, right? You get to do what you want to do here, finally, if you've reached that, that place where you're like, you know what? I have other interests. So now, uh, whether it's capital or an investing company or coaching and training, you get to decide, right? But I don't, I don't by design, I, I spend very little time over here. And, um, and John, you can touch on, you know, kind of what that looks like if you like. Yeah. So, uh, for Clayton and I, we, we get the question a lot. So, Hey, Clayton, how do I find a John or Hey, Clayton and John, how do I find a John? And he, the answer is not always, that may not be what you want because like Clayton said, we've got, we, 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 uh, have a little bit of a unique partnership where we're both, we both have owner mentality and we are, uh, partnering as owners on a lot of things and you may or may not want that. That's up to you. If you find that person, here's the person you need. For sure, the person who has leadership capacity, who can run the organization, you may be able to flatten this organization and have your sales manager uh, kind of uh, fulfill the GM role and then just have the squad leaders and the next level group and the listing partners kind of kind of report into them. But whatever you do, it's all about leverage and it's about finding the right people. And we built this organization around the who. And that's that's, I think, just the, the biggest takeaway that I want to give to to everybody. We started with that. We're we're uh, I think we're about to wrap it up pretty soon with that, which is just make sure you're always recruiting. And the people who can take on the responsibility, they will they will come. They will they will show up. And that's how it worked for Clayton and I. That's how it worked for our sales manager Sarah, who was on his team. Uh, we have when we partnered together six years ago. Uh, Clayton had about a dozen people on the team. Uh, I had a, I had a, a few people that I brought in, and right now there's only there's only like three from each team that are still there out of all the people that we have, and that's two, because two, two from mine, just to be clear. So two yeah. from mine, because we re, we rebuilt. We we, yep. we did we did what we just what we just laid out for you over yep. the past that's, four four plus years. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So the key is to make sure that you have somebody that you can uh, that can do the things that uh, need to be done so you can do the things that you want to do. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, guys, you know, I, I think we've um, there's there's a lot that we will continue to unpack here. What we wanted you to see today is uh, is the different, you know, whether you are, again, at level one. You're just starting out, or you've been you've been here for a while, but but you want to go to the next level. I wish that John and I had had a more clear roadmap. I mean, a lot has changed in this industry, and again, the number one thing that that has really changed for us is always hiring the right people. We are always looking for talent. We had four potential new agents show up to our sales meeting yesterday. We're always looking for uh, the right to hire the right people. And that's where this gets fun. And I, John, I think it's a, we can kind of uh, wrap up with this. The best part about this, this whole process is we are locking arms with like-minded people. And the blessing of this business is we get to provide opportunities for all of these people to become our mission is to improve lives, families, and communities. And we have an ecosystem here that is doing just that. And by the way, 
they're they're helping us improve uh, at the same time. So there's this synergistic relationship, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And John, I, I get this all the time from the people that I, you know, that are like, I don't want to, I don't want to have this big team like you, and you, you must all the time, John. You, I know how busy you are. You, I know how hard you, you know, how 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 much you must work. I'm like, uh, no, dude, because I haven't sold a house in four, almost five years now. Uh, and and listen, an interesting thing happens if you want it to, right? This is this is very intentional. What John and I are building together, and you can do it too. Your phone stop when your phone stops ringing because you're no longer working with, with buyers and sellers, you're gonna have to figure out what to do with your time. If you get to this level, believe me, you're not gonna go, you're not gonna wanna go play play golf seven days, you know, four, five, six, seven days a week. You're gonna wanna start another business, right? It's, it's just who we are, it's baked into our DNA. And that's what we've done. But it's providing opportunity for other people that is the blessing of building this thing, of going for it. JT, anything uh, that you wanna say to wrap up? Good, couldn't have said it better. All right, guys. So listen, uh, appreciate you. Hope this made sense. And uh, again, a lot to unpack. And John and I will keep coming at you uh, with, uh, with everything we've got. Let's grow. Let's grow.